Welcome everybody to Do You Believe Show. I'm your host Noreen and I have my great co-host with me Donna Raymond and we have a very special guest and our friend Dr. Jeff Dwyer. Now tonight our subject is dowsing rods and uh, Jeff is an expert on dowsing rods as well as Donna. So tonight uh, that is our subject and Jeff would you like to uh, proceed with the uh, information on dowsing? Sure, rods? we can talk about this. You know, this is a low-tech form of uh, paranormal investigation, whether you're looking for imprints or ghosts, or using a, a very not normal way of finding things that are hidden from view. And Donna is quite an expert at this. I was up at Preston Castle with her last year, and. We had a tremendous experience with the pendulums, which I was really impressed with. Uh, that place, Preston Castle in Ione, California, is a hotbed for paranormal activity. Lots of imprints, quite a few spirits there, and they were communicating with us, even though we were in a room with a very large number of people. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Um, you know, I, I had, uh, when I usually speak, I make it interactive, so I had all these rods for everybody, and we had groups of rods groups with rods and pendulums and it's the first time I had done it so to see the great we had groups and groups and groups and groups and everybody was getting rods that were crossing and pendulums were going crazy and just the excitement on people's mm -hmm. faces was wonderful it was and you saved the day because it was a tremendous day of speakers but we <laughs> the audience sat in this room freezing because there's no heat there and it's yeah. November and we all listened to really great speakers, but you got us out of our seats, got us moving around, so we were able to warm up <laughs> and shake off some of the icicles that were hanging from my earlobes. So and I really, really appreciated the experience. It really brought the spirits in because, as you said, there's a lot of imprint, a lot of, you know, just things that happened at Preston. Um, it was a boys' reformery, and um, what else? I can't remember exactly all the. Well, it was, it. it was founded as that, and it was believed that this this uh, reformatory for troubled boys. And the troubled boys range from petty thefts, thieves to murderers, mm -hmm. uh, young age murderers. Uh, but it was believed that this place was built, of course, on some sort of sacred Indian ground. That probably enhanced the <laughs> so formation of imprints. And it might have disturbed some of the inmates there, yeah. uh, increasing their criminal tendencies. There was a lot of personal abuse there. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of boys who were killed by guards and there may have been a couple of boys killed by uh, some of the inmates there. That history is a little unclear. There was one uh, housekeeper there who was murdered by one of the inmates. And right. That's been um, featured on shows like uh, Ghost Adventures. So there's an awful lot there, and it's a huge brick building, and I believe some of the architectural features of this place are responsible for the imprints and possibly also the capture of spirits who are unable or unwilling to move on. So we did the pendulum there, and we got some tremendous responses. You know, pendulum types of, um, of dowsing means that you simply hang a, a uh, either something, probably a mineral. Yeah, it can I be metal. Stones. I use stones. Mm -hmm. I, I like natural stones. Mm -hmm. um, anything that's natural, I don't like those glass ones. They just don't seem to resonate much. They don't have much energy behind it. But a stone, I have a, a rose quartz, and I have an amethyst. Um, that I love that seem to work really well. Amethyst is a mineral which attracts a lot of energy. and People use it to attract good luck, to attract good health, uh, safety in traveling, and I think some people use it to keep uh, the spirits of departed loved ones close by too. So people use amethyst for a lot of good reasons, and it's pretty too. It so having a, a piece of amethyst on the end of a, a chain, for instance, you can hold it steady and you can ask it to move in certain directions for yes or no in response to your questions. And we got some tremendous responses that really made sense in terms of the history of the place. Sometimes you'll ask a question and if it's not very specific, you can get a yes or a no, but it's hard to interpret that to know what it really means. But we were asking specific questions about why spirits were there, what crimes they committed, if they were abused or injured or hurt there. And we got some really, really good specific responses. So you responses. used the pendulum instead of the dowsing we used We used the pendulums in Donna's uh, presentation. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. And it's a great way to do dowsing. It's quite valid. It makes sense in terms of the theory behind dowsing. You're picking up on micro-electromagnetic field aberrations or uh, MR, 
this psi energy that we all um, all emit. That's another theory behind dowsing. We can talk a little bit about that once we get going oh, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's two basic theories about how this might work. So would you tell the viewers, some viewers may not know what dowsing rods are okay. and there are other names for it besides the yeah, dowsing? Yeah, there's all kinds of funny names for them. Sometimes they call them uh, witching rods or things of this sort. But dowsing rods are basically pieces of metal um, bent like this, placed in a holder so that the rod can move freely, so it swings freely, and you use two of these, and you hold them steady, and uh, theoretically spirits can communicate with you by moving the rods. For instance, if you announce that a yes answer is a crossing of the rods and they do this, you've gotten a yes response to your question. Uh, if the rods separate further, it's a no. So by using these rods in that way, you can get yes or no answers to your questions. Now, now can you ask the spirit? Um, because I think some people have reversed that. You can define it in any way you want. Uh, with pendulums, you can ask the pendulum to show you which way is a yes answer. And it may swing fore and aft, or it may swing right to left. So once you establish what the yes answer is, the opposite direction, 90 degrees in this case, would be a no answer. And you can ask the rods or spirits to move the rods apart for a yes answer or move them together. Uh, my convention is to move them close together, have them cross. Mm -hmm. That's yes usually answer. the way it's cross for yeah. yes. Cross for yes, and then you can ask them to separate the rods and then move them farther apart for a no answer. Uh, and you can get good responses to your questions. Now, in, in ancient days, people were using <clears throat> a forked branch from a tree. They were cutting a piece of peach tree, apple tree, or willow, and dividing the branches so you could hold two ends in one hand, and it went out forming a Y. And they would walk around looking for uh, water, minerals, buried treasure, lost items, whatever. And when the rod would point down, that would be a point that that's what the object I mean, the rod can point down? Yeah, people would hold it in their hands and they'd mm -hmm. feel these vibrations and, and the energy would just pull it down. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I think not too many people use that technique anymore. There may be some people um, who, who are doing that in Europe, but in the United States, most of us are using the metal rods. And these rods don't have to be of any particular metal. Some people use coat hangers. I've heard of some people actually using plastic. It doesn't oh, really? make a lot of sense to I me. Never... But I think you'd get much better response with something that is metal. Yeah, something's um, polarized. You know, with uh, with metal. Some people go and buy uh, the kind of rod you use in soldering, mm -hmm. which is good iron, so it's polarized. Uh, anything that I think metal is the best thing to use. I know. Yeah. I heard copper was the best to use. Copper's good. Mm -hmm. Copper's good too. Yeah, something with you know a lot of. Um, um, polarization in it. So that means that the ions have electrons distributed not in a perfectly symmetrical way around the core of the atom so that you get this sort of more positive than negative side of the uh, of the atom and that helps you to tap into electromagnetic fields. Well Jeff, when did they start using rods in paranormal, in the paranormal field? Uh, I'm not quite sure when that happened. Um, um, I think it's one of the earliest techniques, probably in the 19th century, people were using dowsing rods. I know that in Europe, as far back as 1500, people were using these things to look for water and minerals and hidden, hidden treasure and uh, weapons and things of that sort, looking for caves, that sort of thing. And it's very likely that there was some attempt to use them in spirit communication, but I don't really have any records for dating back from the 1600s, 1700s that I can verify in any way. It's interesting that the military used these extensively in Vietnam. Oh. During the Vietnamese War, um, Marines were taught how to use these, and they were used to find these caverns or caves that the Viet Cong hid in. I see. I I knew the military was using them, but I can't. How can, can the rods find a cave? Yeah, that's that's hard to say. There's probably the cave is probably disrupting the Earth's natural electromagnetic fields, and so that's what the rods are picking up. They're picking up an anomaly or a um, discontinuity in the Earth's uh, magnetic fields. These caves that were found were quite extensive. The Viet Cong built them so that they housed 
barracks and food storage and even had hospitals and communication centers and these vast underground networks of caves with a tiny, tiny little entrance that could be covered so that no one could find it. And so for a long time, our troops would pass by, think the area was pacified, and the Viet Cong would come out behind them and, and uh, oh, cause a lot of damage. So once we started discovering these underground caves, uh, we started getting the upper hand on it on the Viet Cong. And in fact, I, I've heard of one story where the Marines were using these to find um, communication devices left by the Viet Cong. They were leaving maps and notes inside bamboo tubes buried a couple feet underneath a trail. And the Marines were actually discovering these tubes, digging them up and finding these notes. With a dowsing rod? With dowsing rod? rods, yes. Oh my so God. it was used extensively by the Marines in the Vietnam War. Okay, so how do you know that you really are connecting with spirit? With the you know, that's a question that can be applied to any ghost hunting, ghost hunting technology. You know, how can you be sure that we use an EMF meter, you're picking up something spiritual? Or infrared cameras that pick up light anomalies, uh, can you be sure that that's ghostly or even imprint? It's tough. So you have to ask questions that are somewhat pointed and sort of move you in a direction and that, that might develop some type of specific information. Uh, when I was on the Hornet last year, we used the thousand rods and we discovered that the Hornet in Alameda, the USS Hornet, which is an aircraft carrier, is full of spirits of people who never served on that ship. That ship has become a gathering point or a vortex for spirits who died elsewhere. And I was able to, able to make contact with a friend of mine from high school who was a Marine who was killed in Vietnam, who was never on the Hornet. But I asked him several specific questions and got some very, very specific yes and no answers that leads me to believe that the experience or the process was quite valid. But it all depends on the questions you ask. And you try to go from a little bit general and moving more and more specific. And then you try to match that up with some sort of historical information, which you've obtained either before your investigation or immediately afterwards. These historical information can corroborate whatever information you get from the Gaussian. Okay, notes. and I'll have to tell you, and I think I told you this before, when we did uh, the Star Mansion, mm -hmm. yeah. and um, there were two investigators, uh, you had gone. Yeah, I left and, at 11 o'clock yes, or something like And that. toward the end of the investigation, because we were moving room to room, and um, there were two investigators left, and one of them was using the dowsing rods, and then, of course we had a voice recorder going. Well, when I played that back looking for EVPs, mm -hmm. eight times the rods responded with the same answer as what we got on the voice recorder. Yeah. If it said, if it, the voice said no, the rod said no. Mm -hmm. If it said yes on the voice recorder, the rod said yes. And that's eight times. Yeah, and that's really good corroboration. In fact, I've suggested to people that when they use dowsing rods, it's really easy to have a little recorder like this, which is standard use by most paranormal investigators. Mm -hmm. Just have this in your pocket uh, and just recording everything. And so if you get some audio that matches <clears throat> up, like, like you're describing, that is great corroboration because you're not going to get movement of the rods you know, by some non-paranormal source if you're getting, uh, you know, a voice on your recorder, know, yeah, that so was really that was I, that was the best thing I've ever gotten yeah. as far as evidence. It's a good way to do it. In contrast to this, I would recommend not using an EMF detector because the movement of these rods through the air, especially humid air, which has a lot of polar electrical polarity in it, the movement of these rods through humid air over an EMF recorder. Or EMF meter will cause it to create a signal. So it, the fact that your K2 lights up or something like that, in this case, would not be a valid indicator of uh, a corroboration. So don't use an EMF meter. Use the audio recorder. It's a much uh, better yeah, way to I, go. I don't know if you have uh, any investigators in the room or not. Um, anything else you want to say about the rods? Well, it's become a standard tool, I think, and it's a low-tech device, unlike a lot of other things like 
of flares which cost ten thousand dollars or more <laughs> and infrared cameras and full spectrum cameras and things of that sort these are very low tech i think i put this together for uh, probably a dollar or two and uh, they're easy to make and um, they're good. easy to transport mm -hmm. you know and um, and they're they're really very very useful what's great about the the rods and the pendulum is that they go back so far in history many spirits that come up won't go to those light up gadgets like the kt meter and all those because they don't understand how they work they didn't have those back then so to have dowsing rods they get dowsing rods and mm -hmm. they're they're something that they can relate to and understand how they work so i find that yeah. they're much stronger um, to get contact going mm -hmm. once you have contact going you know we have found that you can tell them this is what this does it lights up it's not going to hurt you and that's you know works but i found that these are are most spirits will come up to those yeah you know that's a really good point i'm glad you brought that up because i've been out with some investigators recently and they'll put a k2 meter which is an electromagnetic field detector out and we're at a place where we're looking for spirits from 80 90 years ago or something like this and these people i'm with are asking light up my k2 meter see those lights there light them up and these people don't know these spirits don't know about electrical circuits they don't know what that strange looking box is there and they're used to lighting candles mm -hmm. or lanterns wow. and you ask them to light something up and they're not going to know. they're not they're gonna they always tell me it's a devil box most times and i'm not going near that i don't know what that is yeah. so that where i'm getting crossings and where my pendulums are going they get that and it's a much easier way spirits will take the easier softer way each time they'll yeah. take the 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 less energy they have to put out and use the better these are just simple for them to manipulate and everybody it, it, and it creates more energy as well when you're using it because then you get excited and they get excited mm -hmm. and it's awesome yeah i think that that's a really great point now i i've heard that um that the rods it's actually the person who is kind of psychic that's making the rods yeah well there's a couple theories and we sort of touched that on uh, that earlier one of the theories about how these things work is that the spirit when it manifests may create very small micro changes in the local electromagnetic field that cause metal rods to move and this may be more likely to occur in humid air because humid air is more polarized electrically that's one theory. The other theory is that, and one that I find attractive also, is that ghosts communicate with us largely through telepathic means. And when you hear a ghost, see a ghost, smell odors created by a ghost, it's really a telepathic information from the consciousness of a dead person to our minds, and then we perceive the odor or perceive the apparition or perceive a sense that somebody's standing next to you or even a touch. So that's telepathic. So in regards to dowsing rods, this may work by the ghost is sending this, this psi, psi energy or psychological energy to you telepathically. And when we register it, it sort of bounces back from us, causing this to move by our own local electromagnetic fields. And I think that's a fairly valid theory. It'd be very hard to test that, but I think it's a fairly valid theory as well. Um, so if that's true, then it's really important that you keep your mind very clear and focused. Mm -hmm. And um, many of us often recommend a period of either meditation or just mind settling before you use a device like dowsing rods or even just doing a simple EVP sweep. No, no, I've seen it where dowsing rods are being used and it doesn't move at all. There's no response. Mm -hmm. There may be no one there or no one who wishes to communicate. You know, these, or, these rods are usually uh, not frightening to ghosts. You know, they're just pieces of metal, which people have seen for thousands of years, unlike a K2 meter, which is kind of weird and new. Uh, so, but they still might be a little bit wary of what this is, so they might not communicate with you. And people, matter. people and their energy, I've, you know, I've done tons of tours and, you know, we always use the gadgets on the tour. And so I can have one person use the rods and they do nothing. And it, it's probably them blocking 
Yeah. But yet I'll give them the pendulum, which they think is pretty, and suddenly that pendulum's going crazy. Mm -hmm. So I usually say, if this doesn't work for you, let's try another thing. And usually it's just that the person and what they decide they're willing to put into the the rod or the uh, pendulum. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because sometimes they won't work for a person. Exactly. You know, we all have different sensitivities to paranormal phenomena, just as we all have different talents. Some of us play the piano exceptionally well, and others could never play well, no matter how much we practice. <laughs> okay, so we have different talents, and some of us have different sensitivities, and people who are very sensitive may have a lot of luck with this, because being sensitive, you can receive that psi energy telepathically from a spirit. It moves through you, and it creates whatever changes in the local EMF field are necessary to move the rods. Other people who are not sensitive, no matter how earnestly they try to communicate, are not going to have the right mindset to receive that psi energy and let it reflect through them to the rods. So you get some people who are successful, others are not. Mm -hmm. Some people are really good technically, but they've never seen a, a ghostly apparition. No matter how much they try, they've been out of 20 years, never seen it. Other people can walk around a corner and see five ghosts standing there, never And why never is tried. that? Different sensitivities. And also, in addition to sensitivity, there's a, there's a factor called receptivity too. Receptivity is your ability to actually receive the psi energy. We can be sensitive to it. You can kind of sense it and pick up on it, but they receive a lot of information, a lot of clarity in terms of sound, odors, vision, or movement. You've got to be very, very receptive, and some of us are more receptive than others. That's just the bottom line. Now, I, also another thing with these rods. Now I've seen them where they go all the way around. Now, mm -hmm. why is that? I think there's a lot of energy there. Yeah. <laughs> Some people create. I've seen people who who the rods are just hugging them, and I jokingly say, "Oh, they're giving you a hug." And then all throughout the night, they're like, "Look, Don, I'm getting a hug." I'm joking, but it's it's their own you know magnetic energy that mm -hmm. can get them just to move, and it's like, okay, this isn't working for you because they're causing you know, that constant moving. Yeah. So it's then, well, let's try something else that isn't so charged by you. Yeah, exactly. They have to do a mind settling because you can yeah. generate, if you're hyper excited about something, you can generate uh, a, your own psi energy, not in response to any telepathic information from a ghost, but you can generate this energy, which will affect the rods too. Also, there's a, a muscular tremor that goes on. It's very fine, not really perceptible when you look at it, but if you're holding these things and you're really excited, it's possible that you, this so micro tremor is going to make this thing kind of spin around and you're thinking, oh my gosh, we've got all this energy going on here. But it's just you being excited. So you've got to be you know, very settled emotionally and it kind of settled inside. Clear your mind of all those internal and external distractions and try to focus on you know, an identified spiritual entity or invite whatever entity is present to communicate with you in a peaceful way. Now, is there a proper way to hold the rods for communication? I've well, seen people use them all different ways. Strange, too. Like they'll hold them way up here, or, yeah. or they'll hold them like this, far out like this. Well, I think it's really important to hold them in a way that your muscular fatigue in your arms doesn't start creating this little micro tremor I just mentioned, because that can happen if you keep any posture for very long that's not very natural and comfortable, the muscles are going to start vibrating a little bit as they try to compensate for fatigue. So you've got to be in a position that's comfortable for you. And most of us are good with the shoulders, you know, the arms just hanging straight down this way and a 90 degree bend here for a while. But it's also important not to think you're going to hold these rods for an hour because most everybody gets a little tired after that. I think it's good to do 10 or 15 minutes Put them down, give it a rest, clear your mind again, come back to it. Would you agree? With I agree. Scale? A lot of times I'll tell people who've never used rods before is to hold them kind of close to your body so that your hand's yeah. kind of resting. Mm -hmm. And then you can hold them even with your knuckles together. But you hold them kind of close. I have them hold them down just a little bit so that you get a, a really good read, especially in the wind. And these things will work in the wind. I've been in the wind and they are actually crossing and, and, but if you hold them just at a little bit, not so straight down a little bit, that, then you'll definitely get a, 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 a definite mm -hmm. read on yeah. them. Oh, Whatever's comfortable though. That spirit agrees with you. <laughs>
<laughs> now, let me ask you this, Donna. I've seen some people put these things on a tripod because oh, they just want to oh, really? yeah, set them on a tripod and set them up and kind of walk away or set them on a tripod and then focus a camcorder and let the camcorder run for an hour or they leave the room or something mm -hmm. and come back and see if they crossed. And I haven't heard of anybody getting anything valid from that. I think you have to have your energy and the spirit's energy to... I don't think so. Yeah. You, you know, it's, it's, it's like trying to leave a pendulum. I, I, I don't... It, probably could happen. I, I'm open to everything, and, and but mm -hmm. I think your energy and the spirit's energy have to kind of come. And that's why I love that you're saying you got to settle your mind because they do get close. They do, and when they do get close, people do have reactions. Your body reacts. And your body's the best thing to use when you investigate, when mm -hmm. you go out and mm -hmm. with spirits. These are awesome. They're visuals. They get you to think in a new way by visualizing and seeing something move that you're not actually doing. Um, but your body will react to whatever's close to you. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you know, important to have both. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's, it's tempting to want to set these up into a, in a haunted venue and walk away so that you remove all human contaminants, as you might say. But on the other hand, you've got to have that human element because you've got to receive the psi energy transmitted by the ghost You've got to be sensitive and receptive to it and let that work through you to create movements. And yes. I find that most people are are out investigating to have an experience. Yeah. So I, I you know, I, I just think that these people who are so into the science base and and who are so into, well, let's, you know, let's see, you know, if we don't have anybody and it crosses and that's definitely proof. It's about experiencing. It's about yeah. you know your own experience, not if it's valid or not. It's was it valid for you? You know, did you feel something? Did you you saw them cross? To me, that's all that matters is your experience, not the proof. Proof's awesome. Everybody has. I think we have enough proof forever. Enough EVPs. We have enough pictures. We have enough documentation that goes to real. <laughs> so if we could get beyond that and start. Everybody having an experience, opening yourself up to spirits being a normal part of life. Okay, yeah. well, Cheyenne, one of the viewers, Cheyenne says, um, but can't you open yourself up to things you don't want to open up to using the dowsing rods? Well, I suppose that's, that's possible with any type of device you use for paranormal investigation. And a lot of people suggest that we have... Um, uh, protective rituals, mm -hmm. St. Benedict's medal, holy water, um, uh, prayers that are said before and after an investigation, or some invocation of protection, and some notice when you leave a venue to any spirits that they are staying there and you're going home. People use a variety of techniques to do that. I think, you know, it, it is true, dowsing rods, you've got to know who you're talking to. And I've seen so many people who think they're talking to somebody, some auntie, and it's actually some mean guy who's just messing with them. Mm -hmm. Spirits can read your mind. They know exactly, you know, how to get into your weaknesses. So you have to really be aware of who are you talking to? Are they being truthful? Um, how do you feel when they're near you? Are they making you nervous? Are they making you feel warm and cozy? Your body will tell you what you're dealing with for the most part and you have to be open to that and protection I'm big on protection and telling them don't follow me home you stay here I was followed a few times oh. once ever so you know that's not cool so yeah it definitely if you're not very aware and you're not paying attention you could be talking to something you don't want to now, talk now to. you know okay so can they also drain all your energy from you as well sure yes. if you allow it yes if you allow it, but then you block them. You definitely, everybody has, everybody can block spirits from taking anything from them. Mm -hmm. But it, again, you're responsible. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But how, okay, yeah. All right. And okay. you know, some people who are, um, they might be overly sensitive or for some emotional reason, uh, latch on to a spirit in a way that's not very healthy and take that spirit with them. And you and I have a mutual friend who that happened to. The spirit stuck with this person for a couple of years and it's quite bothersome. I have a client in San Francisco who's got an attached spirit in his home. And I'm working with him too. So there's always that risk. Whether you go out with an infrared camera, a FLIR, dowsing rods, or anything else, 
there's a risk that a spirit's going to attach to you. What yeah. about through the computer? I'm not I'm not sure about that. Oh. You know, I just don't have enough uh, experience with it, and I haven't heard from enough people who feel that that spirits have come through their computer and attached to it. What them. about draining you of your energy <clears throat> through the computer? Again, I don't know okay. enough about the computer as an intermediary. In I got energy. a story for you. Yeah, I got a story for you, and I'm so this is this is put this on your notepad because I'm giving you some information. It's gonna scare me? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> and I think I told the viewers I can't last week or something. I want to tell you. Okay. I I was communicating back and forth with a very well known paranormal person. He's written books. He's They've done him on my ghost story, haunting everything. Okay, he's very well known. And I was I was talking with him because he was going to be a guest on our show. Mm -hmm. But we were communicating back and forth on Facebook. And this was in, in one day. And and this this uh, and it, and this one message it was and just a normal message but we were back and forth and oh my god i couldn't i couldn't talk to him anymore he completely hmm. drained me i i could i was i was so i was like a wet noodle hmm. i couldn't keep my eyes open i felt like i was slammed and I, I, it was. I had to go to bed. I was exhausted. I couldn't keep my eyes open, and I, I was. I had nothing left in me. So this was a spirit that came through your computer from this person who was some distance away, with whom you were communicating. Yes. Yes. See, I'm. I'm not. That's I'm never not happened at to me. I'm at a loss as to how to explain how that could happen. It did. Yeah. One of the things, another story that that it was a case that we both were on with the group. And um, we would go to this house that was um, under attack. And um, I learned a big lesson is that when people would watch the show with the live streaming, I would get emails from so many viewers from all over the place who didn't know each other other than chat rooms. And they would tell me the same thing. Things would start happening in their room that they were in yeah. from watching the show. And the yeah. big lesson I got in that I was told was that they come through the lines of the computer and that's how things yeah. get into your home is through computers okay well i'm still open on that it's just a little hard for me to to kind of figure that out the the, the easier explanation to me would be that when a person watches a show like this at home on a computer they are emotionally and psychologically in tune with the paranormal they're kind of open to what we're talking about they're receiving that information and once the spirit detects that you're open you know opportunistic spirits will right. come in whether they're living in your backyard or in your neighbor's house or something they'll come in uh, it's easier for me to accept that than to think that a spirit is going to leave here and go to Colorado and, and travel to somebody's computer and start attaching to them but you know what we did a show here one night and um, we had a, a guest on Skype and and, and the house that he was in, he was renting from, the lady, we didn't know this, but a lady had died. The owner had died in the house making a chocolate cake in the kitchen. Huh. But we didn't know that. And as we were doing our show with Skype, we all started to smell chocolate. Oh, wow. And, That's cool. and, and we said it out loud. We go, and one, one of the investigators said, do you smell chocolate? And I go, and we said, oh, my God. We all smell chocolate. And then come to find out, the fella that was on Skype was telling us that the woman had died making a chocolate. Oh, that's really And not only that, her name was Betty, yeah. and she was communicating with us on our side. Betty Crocker? No. <laughs> <laughs> her name just happened to be Betty. <laughs> right. Well, this is really compelling, and it might explain why my laptop's running really slow. Maybe I've got a lot of spirits in there. But, you know, that is a little worrisome if they can travel from anywhere in the world they that can. you might communicate with to through your laptop yes. to show up. Because the, the, the internet are all cables that energy goes through, yeah. and spirit is energy, and we yeah. know that. So yeah. good or bad, another opening. And we used to, we started saying, protect yourself when you're watching the show. Because people kept telling me we're having things happen in our bedrooms and whatever room that they were in. Uh -huh. and 
you know, it, I I would have never guessed that that's possible, but it that's, is possible. That's freaky. Yeah, that's it is. Freaky. It really is. That's is weird. Yeah. So now so you learn yeah, something. Know. Yay! Dr. Jeff Dwyer learned I something. Learned <laughs> so <laughs> open to learning new things. Oh, yes. Yeah. And awesome. it scares me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jeff, now, do you think that in, in ghost hunting, um, all this fancy equipment that people want to buy, you know, every time some inventor puts out some some gadget, everybody wants to buy these gadgets, and they cost a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Um, what do you think <clears throat> should be in their basic ghost hunting kit? Kit, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Good. yeah kit. there's two ways to, to approach ghost hunting, I think, or actually three could, could combine the basic two. One of them is method is a, a psychic method, which I tend to use, um, and in which case you don't need any equipment at all. Just need your basic sensitivities and receptivity to spirits. The other end of the spectrum is what we see on Ghost Hunters and some of the other shows where they come in with three big vans full of uh, infrared cameras and they set them up all over the place and full spectrum cameras and audio recorders and motion detectors and run all that down to a huge bank of computers and record everything and then spend three days going through it trying to find something that's paranormal. That's the other extreme. Uh, I tend to be a little bit more in the middle these days. Uh, I, I focus mostly on my psychic methods by supplement it with the audio recorder. I think it's really useful to have one of these little digital recorders. They're pretty cheap. You can get them yeah. for less than 50 bucks, sometimes on less than $30. And they record up to 24 hours. You can run the, uh, the recording into your computer for storage and editing, so you can chop out 23 and a half hours of nothingness and keep that 25 minutes of good stuff and uh, you can use software like Adobe Audition to process that further which I like to use so audio recorders are really good and I think dowsing rods are really good pendulums or rods just great stuff and uh, a simple camera you don't need an infrared camera you don't need a full spectrum camera I, I like to use a camcorder for a couple of reasons. One, you can set it up on night shot, so you get kind of an infrared uh, technology going there. And I set it up on a tripod, and it records my movements around a site. It records audio, so I can make audio notes just by saying, uh, I'm going to open that door now, or you know that noise you just heard is me kicking a bucket or kicking a chair. You can make audio notes. Uh, the camcorder may capture things going on behind you that you don't see, like light anomalies or movement of objects. So that's useful too. And camcorders are, you know, they're not cheap, but they're fairly inexpensive and probably worth the investment. So I think that's basic equipment, and that's what I'm using these days. When we went out to Alcatraz in April, the... Oh, tell them about that. Uh, we went out to film a TV show for Travel Channel in April. And we were out there a couple of nights, which is really fun to go to Alcatraz and get there at 10 and stay until 3 or 3.30. Um, it's really spooky when the fog comes <laughs> in and all that. But the production team uh, asked me if I wanted to use a FLIR, and I thought, oh, wow, good. So they gave me a FLIR. Did you use one? Yeah, it's a, oh. it was a $15,000 jobber, and I carried it around. And you know what? We got a lot of stuff on audio. We had a lot of personal experiences. Uh, People saw things and heard things, but we really didn't get anything on the floor. So I think it's an attractive technology that probably isn't really worth it. Um, and it's easy to misinterpret things on a floor too. I noticed one of the things I did during the show to prove how um, misleading it can be is I, I was shooting at a window and it picked up this image of a person on a window and it's pretty cold out there at night so yeah. the glass is pretty uniform temperature but as I came in on the window there was an outline of a person in the window and as we look closer it was the reflection of the woman standing oh. next to me. <laughs> she was eight or ten feet away from the window but her body heat was projecting that far onto this window and creating this neat, really interesting outline. Everyone thought, wow, you got an apparition there. As we fine-tuned it, we could see it was my partner. Wow. So you can you can spend 15000 on technology that could be very, very misleading. 
So I tend not to turn, to gravitate that way. Now, Jeff, would you tell the viewers some other things you've been involved in? Uh, I'm doing some things with Ghost Adventures. Uh, last year I was uh, on a episode that was filmed at Winchester Mystery House. And that was quite a lot of fun. We talked about that a little bit last time I was here. Uh, it's fun to, to meet that crew. There's a nice bunch of guys and Zach and Nick are a lot of fun, as you might expect. And Aaron is a lot of fun too. Uh, he likes to show you pictures of his mustache and his beard, which he changes every couple of months. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun down there. But I've been re doing some research for them uh, recently on sites uh, around uh, Central California. And we've settled in on um, going to Brookdale Lodge next week to film another episode. Oh, that's nice. So, so cool. going down Brookdale there, Lodge. And Brookdale Lodge is a place that was opened uh, about 1910, 1920 as a retreat, uh, opened by a doctor who made it as a retreat for people who were ill and needed to recover. And then it became more of a resort for wealthy people and and it sort of it morphed into a resort for Hollywood elite back in the 40s and 50s. There are pictures on the wall of Marilyn Monroe and James Dean and some of these other stars from that era who visited the lodge. It was away from Hollywood and at that time it was away from the media as well. So I could go there and rest. And then in the late 40s and 50s it became sort of a mob hangout. The legend is that mobsters from Las Vegas would go there to conduct their secret business, which included snuffing out rivals and torturing the people they were trying to get information out of and things of that sort. And, How and, much of that's true, we don't know. And picking the ladies out in the swimming pool. Yeah, some of that, <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of different eras of paranormal there. There's there's a little girl named Sarah Logan who drowned in the creek. That's fairly well documented. But you saw her. Yeah, I saw her when I was about 12, 13 years old. I was, uh, our family was staying at the lodge and I went down to the creek and uh, looking for tadpoles and I felt this presence come up right close to my shoulder and I thought it was my sister who was you know, about three years younger and blonde hair. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw her there and just, Typically, I didn't pay a lot of attention to my sister at the time, but I did try to keep her from going in the water. <laughs> and just then, my mother, who was up on the upper level, called out to me to get away from the creek, and I looked up, and my sister was standing next to my mother. And I saw this image here still, and as I turned, it just faded away. Oh, my goodness. So that was Sarah Logan. So oh. I saw her then, and um, um, got some EVP from her in, in, in more recent visits, but she's, she's there still. She's yeah. there. So we hope to make contact with her next week when we go oh, to Ghost Adventures. Oh, God. Can you... Now, that, that episode will be aired? Probably before Halloween, sometime late September, October. They actually put these shows together pretty quickly. The, the post-production is only about four to six weeks, which is pretty quick, given the fact that they they get a lot of a lot of video time from these shows. Oh, God, Jeff, how awesome. It'll be fun. Oh, God, yeah, I so can't wait to see that That's one. coming up, and the Alcatraz show I filmed in April will be airing on Travel Channel sometime in the next few weeks. I haven't been given the airtime yet, but just keep watching Travel Channel for the legends of Alcatraz. Nice. You'll now, weren't you a consultant on a movie? Um, yeah, The Haunting in Connecticut. Yes. And uh, that's a fun movie to rent. You know, it's it's got... It's got the Hollywood treatment of a true story uh, that took place in Connecticut. And it was really interesting to read the true account of this uh, ghostly activity, which is pretty intense that went on there. The family experienced apparitions and uh, movement of objects to the extent that uh, chairs were moved around. And um, there's one scene where chairs from a dining room are all piled up on top of each other. and. Um, the producers kept asking me, can ghosts do this? Can ghosts do that? Is it reasonable for ghosts to do this? And I would make a judgment call about this. And very often they would say, well, yeah, but we think it looks pretty cool if we go ahead and do this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so they took some license. But generally it's a really good movie. It's pretty scary, actually, because a lot of it's true, what happened to this family. And it turns out that the, the home they were in, the house, used to be a, uh, a mortuary. Oh, my oh yeah. And the guy who ran it actually didn't bury the bodies in oh. the caskets. He took them and stored them in his basement for oh whatever reason, God. we don't know why. 
So in the end, when the room is finally, the walls are finally opened up, all these kind of mummified bodies came, came out. Oh, and that's why the place wow. was so hot. Wow. So if you get a chance, rent a haunting in Connecticut. It was just a lot of fun. Didn't that boy recently die? In real life? Yeah, he had some sort of illness um, that he uh, was dealing with at the time, and it was thought that uh, part of uh, what he was reporting, the experiences he was reporting, were just attributed to his illness or the chemotherapy he was receiving. But in reality, it was due to paranormal activity. He really died? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I hear. But I, 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 I the, the mother posted. This was last oh, yeah? year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't keep up with it. Okay. Oh, yeah, he, that kid died. That's yeah. too bad. But it's a good movie to see. And uh, when people ask me if there's a movie out there that really portrays ghostly activity with a fair degree of reality, I'd say, well, look at that one, because a lot of it is, is I think, pretty good. Another one that people don't look at very much is a movie called Dragonfly with Kevin Costner. Oh, I remember oh, that right, movie. Right. Yeah, and yeah. that's good because his his deceased wife is communicating with him by moving things around and, you know, and giving messages to other people who write. They do automatic writing in a way. They're creating these symbols which he has to track down to try to find what it is that she wants him to find. I don't want to spoil it for you. But it's a, it's a pretty good movie. It's, I don't think it's um, overly done in terms of Hollywood um, by creating it um, um, more dramatic than it really needs to be. So that's a Dragonfly. Good it's an movie excellent movie. Excellent movie. Do you want to do some spirit We could do that. You know, I, I'm going to keep this on because it's a good idea to run an audio while you do this. And yeah, we could do some of that because this room is supposedly... You've got some haunted activity in here. Uh, well, her whole house is haunted. But the thing is, because they've been doing this so long, yeah. they like to come in here and, and yeah. add their own two cents. Well, was that night that we did a show with you? We yeah. heard the little girl, remember? Yeah, I listened to that Yeah, when you posted it up. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Every show. Night. Every yeah. show we do, I have EVPs. Every show. Good. I post them on YouTube. So I, I'll give I'll you the link. That. You can go okay. over there and listen to them. All right. So should we do it here or yeah. do we oh, no. We can oh, do it right here if you want. Yeah, yeah. Do you have enough room? Uh, you want to move the table so out? <laughs> no, I think we're okay. Okay. Do you want me to move? Some elbow room. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on here. Okay. Now, will you play that back to here if we got anything? Yeah, I can do right. that and I can process it. No, by, no, no. Um, won't you play back tonight? Okay. Yeah, we can try that. So what I want to do, I got my audio recording recorder running, and I'm going to try to get real quiet and comfortable here. And I've got the rods pointing away, and uh, it's kind of settle out my mind from the day and all of that. This doesn't take me very long. I've been practicing a meditation before everything I do with paranormal, and uh, it only takes a couple of minutes to sort of sweep away all those external distractions and internal distractions which pop up. You want to get really good and comfortable from sitting or standing. Okay. And we're going to invite spirits to use these two pieces of metal. You can move them so that they come together. And I'm going to show you what that's like. You can move them so they cross like this or you can move them so they separate further to create a yes or no response. And we're going to sort of start off by asking you to create a response of yes to my question. Is there any spirit here who wishes to communicate with us tonight? Well, that's a good cross, so. Great cross. Okay, now okay. I want you to. For the viewers, in case they can't see that, that is yeah. a yes. Yeah, the rods have crossed. So I'm going to ask you to take the rods apart, move them back to the beginning. And if it's hard to do that, sometimes we have to do it for the spirit. Good. Pull them all the way apart. Very nice. Okay. All right, so we know that you're here, and if you're a nice, 
we, you're welcome to be here. Okay. Now, I'd like to know if your, you know, what your gender is. Are you a man? Cross the rods for yes, if you're a man. Are you a woman, a female? Use your energy to cross the rods. Okay. And we've got a cross here. So yes, we have a female present tonight. Move the rods apart. Pull them all the way apart if you can. Okay, now are you uh, a little girl? Are you a grown woman? Okay, good, thank you. All right, so let the rods go apart again. So you see how this is working? We have identified the gender and uh, the degree of maturity of the spirit. Okay. Okay. Do you live here in this town? All right. So we're crossing again. So. We don't have somebody who's coming to us from Colorado through your computer. Okay. <laughs> All right, take the rods apart. Wow. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you about the date. Okay, are you living in the 20th century? The 1900s? Are you living in the 1800s? Excuse me, the 19th century. I confused you, yes. The 19th century, the 1800s. Are you living in the 1800s? Okay. Are you living in the 1900s? Are you living in the 20s, the 20 years? Oh. Whoa. Okay, take the rods apart, please. So we have perhaps a new spirit. Yeah. Or she's old and she recognizes you living in 20. She says she knows you. Yeah? Yeah. So you know me, huh? So did she come here because he's here? Mm -hmm. Okay, take the rods apart. Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> Have I known you a very long time? Have I known you for only a few years? I'm trying to decide. She's confused on the years part. Yeah, could be. Have you known me since I was a little kid? No. So, did you meet me uh, as an adult, when I was an adult? you were at. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> so somebody came here. All right, take the rods apart. So what can we ask to try to get a little bit more information here? If I saw your face, would I recognize you right away? Great. Well, I 
would love to see you. If I can't see you, I would like to hear your voice. And uh, we'd like you to speak to us. Was there a location you went to, a haunted location that was by water? Well, I was on the USS Hornet just last week. Beach, though. A beach? Yeah. <clears throat> Well, it's interesting because when I went to Alameda to visit a hornet, I stopped out at the beach in Alameda. Because she, she, what she's showing me is there was a beach that you were at. Um, <laughs> I think she's mistaking you for somebody else. Mm. But um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> she really likes you. Really? Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> ah! <laughs> I have not That's admired. a big yes. <laughs> She has a bit of a crush on him. Really? Is she following him around? Ask her. All right. Do you follow me around from day to day throughout my life? It's okay to, if, to admit it. Are you following me around? Well. Is she very passionate? Well, if she is, it's benevolent because I, have, I don't feel any negative attachments these days in my life. She's, she's, she's somebody who was attracted to you. Hmm. You, you, she was just happened to be in the area that you were in with the beach. And, um, I think she thinks you're somebody else, but your energy is similar to somebody that she used to know long oh. ago. So she's attracted to your energy. And like I said, she has a bit of a crush on you. Oh, <laughs> well, I'd like to hear the sound of your voice and uh, we'd like you to try to speak to us. We have ways of recording your, your voice, so speak up and uh, we'll see if you can communicate with us. Were you with me today at my work? You know where I work? Were you with me? Okay, cool. It's interesting because throughout the day, I have very few times when I'm alone, but I never feel completely alone. Never. Even, even in my office or uh, when I take a break and go outside the hospital and walk away and get away from people, I never feel completely alone. Some people acquire spirits. It's not a bad thing. It's just you acquire them and they kind of stay with you. And the only problem is, of course, if they're gonna start taking energy when you're sleeping. Yeah. But doing what you do, doing what I do, um, we acquire them. And mm -hmm. so we open up that line of communication and they're like, yeah, you're paying attention, off we go. And it's not that we invite them to come with us, it's just kind of like that open energy that they will stay with us. Mm -hmm. So are you speaking to me at night while I'm trying to sleep?